When someone mentions voodoo, what comes to mind? Don't actually answer that. I'm sure it's nothing positive. Regardless, as I did research into this topic, I've met genuine voodoo practitioners and attended multiple ceremonies, so I'd be as bold as to say that I have at least adequate knowledge to explain voodoo. The truth is, voodoo is an authentic religion hidden behind centuries of racist and colonial practices, something the entertainment industry did little to rectify. To this day, though harmful stereotypes of the religion prevail, voodoo perseveres, often in the hands of society's most underrepresented populations. In this video essay, I'm going to try and challenge the stereotypes you probably know. The first thing to understand about voodoo is its history, which begins with the religions of West African ethnic groups, such as the Fawn and Yoruba. During the 17th and 18th centuries, people from these groups were kidnapped as part of the transatlantic slave trade, then put to work at plantations all over the Caribbean. With brutality, forced conversion, and persecution bearing down on them from all sides, slaves were forced to establish a collective identity, some new way to define themselves outside of traditional ethnic, linguistic, or spiritual folkways. Thus, they took disparate elements of their own religions, of Catholicism, and even of Native American practices, and blended them together. Across the New World, these practices created a wide variety of other African-based religions, such as Umbanda, Candomblé, and Santeria. In Haiti, these influences led to voodoo. Haiti achieved its independence in 1804, the first independent black republic of the Western Hemisphere. This didn't bode well for America, which saw Haiti's liberation as a bad example to the continued practice of slavery, which, as you might know, was all the rage for another 60-odd years. Later still, during the banana wars of the early 20th century, the U.S., taking after the imperialist practices of its parent country, invaded several Caribbean nations. In Haiti, Marines forced native Haitians into an underprivileged worker class, the Cacos. At the same time, explorers and writers journeyed into the heart of Haitian voodoo and returned with farcical stories of cannibalism and orgies, ideas which have ever since been perpetuated for decades in movies and television shows. Keep in mind, all of this was part of the concentrated effort to oppress black populations internationally. Even so, the religion's practice continued in Haiti, and it has even spread to Brooklyn, New Orleans, and beyond. It's important we understand how voodoo's ritualizing is presented. To that effect, I'd like to describe the worship. Voodooists recognize a pantheon of spirits known as the Loa. Altars are built to the Loa specifications, and they are known to have favorite colors, preferred foods, and even certain days of the week when they, specifically, are served. However, the most dramatic fundamental way spirits are worshipped is through cheval. Taken from the French for horse, a Loa spirit mounts the bodies of human practitioners. In effect, it's a form of spirit possession. Now, you probably think the whole concept is a little weird. By and large, the standard view of possession is... Well, in the face of the enemy, <laughs> that the enemy have no power over. Voodoo, however, does not see Shaval as demonic, nor are there really any demons present in the religion. This is simply how the spirits manifest in physical form. Anthropologists Sidney Mintz and Michelle Roth Truyot describe certain religious proceedings dubbed transformative practices, any sort of act meant to petition supernatural beings to influence the normal world. An American Indian rain dance is a transformative practice. So is a Roman Catholic Mass. When a Christian family gathers around the bed of a sick child to pray for her recovery, family members engage in a transformative practice. Cheval can be understood as just another one of these transformative practices. As a matter of fact, the concept of spirit possession isn't even that alien outside of voodoo. There are similar folk traditions across the African continent, Japan, and even ancient Greece. I'm not trying to proselytize. All I'm arguing for is that the viewer reframe their perspective on the esoteria of what they may consider otherwise foreign theological concepts. Imagine if you told a non-Christian about eating Jesus' body and drinking his blood. It's kind of weird out of context, isn't it? Unlike more widely practiced religions, voodoo lacks institutional power, both historically and into the modern day. There is no central, organized authority. As I've mentioned, a higher proportion of marginalized groups practice voodoo. In my own experiences, I've met quite a few priests who were themselves members of the LGBT community. These things are irrelevant in voodoo, a religion formed from some of the most extreme oppression imaginable. I think this guiding philosophy is reflected best in the Gede, the spirits of death, whose behavior and possession tends to be roguish and vulgar. By their logic, everybody dies in the end. What's the point in getting caught up in pointless divisions over things like race or sexual orientation? It seems best to focus on the here and now, and ensure everybody can live their best possible life. Thank you. This is Jonas Voss, signing off.